One of the hallmarks of a functional and representative democracy is a system that includes women, youth, and people with disabilities in the decision-making process. The drive to bring leaders and representatives of political parties in Nigeria to deal with the challenges of inclusivity is the focus of this meeting by the Westminster Foundation for Democracy as part of its efforts to improve the quality of governance. The report of an assessment that was conducted as a result in partnership with the NEEDS points to opportunities for political parties to do more in terms of including women, youth, and persons with disabilities in their structures beyond the provision that we have in the Constitution for women leaders, for youth leaders, and representatives of persons with disability. We can actually do more. With Nigeria's National Assembly accounting for only 3.6% of women lawmakers, the advocacy to adopt a more proactive approach in creating structures that will improve the inclusion of more women, youth and persons with disabilities in parliament can't be more apt. When one considers the abysmal representations of women in the recently conducted or concluded 2023 general election, where, for instance, a patriarchy 3.6% of women were elected into the National Assembly, where one realizes the critical importance of taking deliberate action to address the issue of the representations of excluded groups in the broader political processes, and particularly elective and appointment positions. Some people here argued that dealing with inclusiveness isn't just about ticking the boxes, but ensuring that women, youth, and persons with disabilities are well represented in a strong and cohesive political structure. I don't know how many of us actually have persons with disabilities as part of our decision-making um, committee members, you know, in our political party. Um, I'm going to say it's very euphemistically because of the sensitivity of this gathering. Even when we include persons with disabilities, it just looks like we are doing it to balance the figures, not because we essentially want to be inclusive. Perhaps it's time to find a way forward as the keynote speaker, Professor Fatai Badru, steps in to give some pep on inclusivity and future of democracy in Africa. Just as other prominent personalities also added their voices to the conversation. Political parties should comply with their constitution. They have very robust idea there, you know. Uh, in spirit and letter, where all members are enabled, are empowered, are encouraged, right, to fully partake in decision making, we strengthen the internal democracy. When you have it in your paper, what can you really do? You know, power is very sweet. When you get power, you actually want to part away with it. You know, absolute power for us, absolutely. So it is important for us to know that, yes, when you're a man or a woman, a youth or whatever it is, it's important for everybody to be on the table. Our party, the APC, we have a constitution that has granted autonomy to our youth wing. So the youth wing of the APC, for example, is semi-autonomous, which means we have our own level of independence. Ideally, by the provision of the constitution, we now have a responsibility or the power to have our own secretariat, to have our own constitution, to have our own structure, although the financing to put that in practical place of course, has not been there. And those are areas I think the BFD, the British government, and donor agencies also look at, not just how to help and strengthen political parties, but to strengthen the youth wings of political parties and the women wings and the people with disability wings. The consensus here is the charge on political parties to amend their constitutions and provide the political will to ensure inclusivity within the structures and for those in government to ensure same within all level of governance. Binga Ashuru, Arise News.